Um, here we are again, I guess, uh, at the uh, second last session of this year's Champion 2020 in the very special online edition with uh, George showing us the uh, moderator view of his Presenter. slides, yeah, which probably does. isn't on purpose, um, <laughs> but stuff happens. Yeah, so um, uh, we're almost through this 24-hour streaming marathon, which is happening as a replacement event for the uh, in-person JEP 2020 event that was supposed to happen at uh, the uh, at sunny Lisbon uh, right now this very weekend. Uh, the in-person event had to be cancelled uh, because of the coronavirus issue, but um, I'm really, really happy to see you all guys here being around in the stream um, and now uh, listening rather closely to George uh, showing us the latest and greatest in Joomla world, which is Joomla for Beta. Um, before I hand over to uh, George, uh, just a few more notes. Um, if you want to tweet about uh, Joomla for Beta or uh, do a Facebook post, uh, please do not forget the JEP20 hashtag. Um, and... Um, yeah, I think that's the most important thing right now. We can skip the rest. Um, George, it's up to you. Um, blow us away with some Joomla 4 magic. Cool. Cheers, guys. So uh, as you probably know, about two hours ago, we released Joomla 4 Beta. So um, this talk is hopefully going to kind of brush through um, some of the things that we're shipping in it, uh, give you a reason to be excited about what the future holds for Joomla. and um, hopefully leave some time for questions at the end as to kind of where we're going, what the future holds and all that kind of stuff um, beyond what we discussed earlier in the maintainers session. So uh, first of all, quick thing about me. Uh, I am a, a consultant engineer at Automation Logic. Uh, I've been on the production team since November 2014, so just over five years now. Um, and I've been release lead in various things and deputy release lead in other things and done stuff um and i am based out of london so uh, if you have any questions or any of these kinds of things and want to get in contact with me please do feel free i try my best to reply although i'm not perfect as always if i don't get back to you on the first time please just don't feel bad about pinging me again i am sometimes these things do get missed because i've got things coming in left right and center so yeah, please do feel free to give me a ping and also feel free to chase me if you feel like I am not getting back to you in a speedy enough time. So um, I think where I kind of want to start with this is um, kind of Juma's position in the market and where we're going. So um, for a long time, people have been concerned about the rise of WordPress and its effect on the Juma market. But I think actually, if you look at the trends, at least in the UK, um, the problem isn't necessarily with uh, the fact that we're losing market share to WordPress, um, but actually it's nothing to do with WordPress being a better product than Joomla. But actually, um, if you look at the trends, we're losing our market share to self-hosted sites. And uh, so, well, not self-hosted sites, but hosted site people hosting sites for you. So the Wixes, the Squarespaces, the Shopify's, and WordPress.com absolutely fits into that trend. So we've got to remember that in terms of self-hosted sites, which is what we're um, dealing with, uh, we're um, still doing just fine. Um, and unless we are looking to move into a hosted marketplace uh, where we're building pre-built like sites with extensions coming on there is not a huge amount that we are going to be doing to magically fix market share and i think that's something that we've got to either accept or juma has to move aggressively into that market share which is kind of beyond the scope of what juma 4 is so um let's move on so um let's think about what we've got in juma 3. so juma 3 hosts are kind of world-class uh, multilingual system. I think Joomla's multilingual system is by far one of the best that we've got um, out of all CMSs. Uh, we've got support for content, categorizing that content, tagging that content, content history of that content. So we've kind of got like the full array of 
uh, support for managing that content. We've got hundreds, maybe even thousands of configuration options to make it as easy as possible to manage it. Uh, our code base is actually relatively decent compared to some of our competitors in terms of quality and maintainability. And we've got thousands of extensions in a single marketplace, aka dead, uh, which allows people to uh, download and customize Joomla to their heart's content and build exactly the site that they're looking to build for their clients or for themselves. Um, and it also, I, I will just remind people that we were the first CMS to include a responsive backend interface, um, just like I believe we'll be one of the first to be building a people-first interface with Joomla 4 with our accessibility requirements. So um, that's what Joomla 3 looks like. So alongside Joomla 3, along the way, we built our own issue tracker to wrap GitHub so people had an easy place to create issues without feeling necessarily overwhelmed by code. Um, and we built a really fantastic support community to wrap around that. We have people doing documentation, communicating on GitHub, replying on forum posts, replying on the Joomla Stack Exchange. We've got people all over the place who all are part of the bigger community, marketing people and all that kind of stuff. Joomla is way more, whilst Joomla's main product or its, its only product is software, there is a massive ecosystem of people outside of just tech who are contributing towards it and helping the product evolve. So I think there's a lot of things that we've got right that has allowed us to largely keep part of our market share in the face of um, hardship um, in terms of um, allowing, um, you know, the rise of these kind of uh, pre-hosted sites of people. I think this community building these fantastic products has really allowed us to keep our market position you know, stay as best as we can with um, out there. So um, that doesn't, of course, mean to say that we got everything right. Um, and, you know, we're, there's always things that we can do to improve. And I'm not saying that Joomla should be complacent or stop developing or stop moving forwards. So in terms of um, how we started to try and move forwards, in Joomla 2014, uh, in Jab 2014, we came out, uh, we came up with a development plan in a production meeting. We said we'd use semantic versioning with major minor patch releases. So that means major releases are things that um, break backwards compatibility and are you know, bit, uh, relatively larger changes. Minor releases, which are basically features, they may have you know, minor backwards compatibility issues. Largely, for example, if you build a new extension called Confields, obviously, or if you have a com fields already installed on your site, things are going to break. But we don't consider that to be backwards compatibility breaking in itself. Um, and patch releases, which are just purely bug fixes. Uh, we release monthly, roughly every six weeks. We've been doing this now on Tuesdays. Uh, so for those of you who uh, haven't noticed that we've been releasing uh, uh, kind of roughly every six weeks on a Tuesday, wake up. Um, that's what we're doing. So you shouldn't be any excuse to this has been catching you by surprise. And we've been doing release candidates regularly now a week in advance so that people can actually test the releases. They're there for a full week on GitHub, we tweet about them. And um, yeah, so we also publish a roadmap that can be found on the developer site. And there's a full development strategy, which can also be found on the development site. Um, as well as the release candidates, we've also got the release team who are testing the release against uh, predefined checklists and also against some of their own sites liaising with developers if they find issues. So um, I guess um, one of the other things that's really important to think about when we're when we decided that we wanted to think about doing this new major release that I just talked about is what's the target market? Who is, who are the people that we need to be targeting Joomla at? And um, Path wrote a fantastic blog about this, which I've used on my slide decks ever since, um, which kind of shows um, <clears throat> a very rough look at how the Joomla ecosystem looks. So we have core developers and platform developers or I guess framework developers, we call them these days. 
Um, you've got the platform, the, the, the framework, the CMS, the extensions, the templates, and then the Joomla market, which he comprised of four things, the extension developers, the system integrators, which are you know, the web agencies and smaller uh, kind of one person companies, uh, template developers and consulting agencies, which are the larger teams um, of people um, who are kind of building large scale, maybe government level projects. <clears throat> so he classified these four groups of people as um, things that we need to target. And that's um, kind of the four collective areas that we're gonna target Juma 4 at. And so I'm gonna try and come back to these groups as we go through and show kind of what we've been doing to target each of these kind of groups of people. So, um, marketing goals, um, that's, this is the uh, kind of corresponding half of what our target market is. So you can say that when we are kind of targeting at things, we're looking to build a platform that making extensions easy to build in a secure way. Uh, these, uh, extensions that we're building to the core should be, um, or that we're, people building should be customizable, extensible, and integrate cleanly. And site administrators should be able to add content with ease without needing to pay for large amounts of custom training. So these are kind of like the very high level goals that kind of drive Joomla at its core and what kind of drive us to make a better product for everyone. So um, in 2015, a year later, uh, we started talking about Joomla 4. So Nick Dianopoulos wrote a series of blog posts about J4 any feature ideas, a vision, marketing audiences. And in chapter 2015, a group of us sat it down during the Make It Happen to discuss this vision and try and turn it into a, a kind of product list. And we ended up coming up with this, which is um, and was the kind of high level vision of where we wanted to go to back in 2015. And actually, a large amount of this didn't actually change as things went on. Some of the stuff came in earlier, like custom fields. Um, a few things did get dropped as we went, and other things, but a lot, a large amount of it ended up getting in. Um, so, um, June the four, uh, top level goals based on that: eliminate duplicated code. There was basically been no big drop of. Um, code that we've deprecated since about 2010 now. So in the last 10 years, there's been a large amount of technical debt that's built up. This is one our chance to kind of clean it up, uh, make the admin and by definition of cleaning up, make it easier for new people to come in and build new extensions because there's a clean defined way of working on them. Uh, make the admin interface more user friendly. So, um, with what we did with June the three in the back end um, way back, it was uh, good for that. Uh, we had this mobile first interface um, built on Bootstrap, um, but it, of course, the uh, the internet's come along a long way since then, and there's a lot more we can do now to make it more appealing to new um, administrators who are wanting to make content with Joomla. Uh, improve SEO to the latest standards. Uh, Build Joomla around people by um, uh, by requiring a level of uh, giving an out the box uh, AA level of accessibility by WCAG guidelines, um, so that people could have a very good chance of being able to build websites with that are accessible to people to as many people as possible. Standardize on the Joomla framework packages, which already back then had. Um, uh, moved along a long way beyond the CMS and came with better testability and portability. Uh, upgrade from Bootstrap 2 to 4, and introduce web services into core. So in 2020, with the release of beta, where are we? How have we um, gone with trying to um, reach these guidelines? So uh, Joomla is significantly easier to install. Uh, we had too many options in the installer. and Site integrators now have a simple experience to install Joomla in significantly less steps, just three. And uh, I can vouch that uh, it takes me approximately 30 seconds now to install a Joomla 4 install. 
Um, so I think and that's with obviously with a lot of experience though, I think anyone could do it realistically in under two minutes. It really does not take long. Um, so this is step one of three for those interested. So as you can see, um, there is not a lot to do um, in step one and steps two and three are equally minimalistic. Um, a lot of the stuff um, that you used to be able to configure in the installer, uh, we've just decided that it's better to let people edit it via global configuration when they actually get into the back end and keep the installer as lightweight and as flexible as possible. Um, we have a new backend template. It's very exciting. It's been through several revisions, uh, I have to say. Um, with several different versions of it um, along the way, but I'm very happy with where we got to at the end. Um, it's very clean, it's uh, relatively fast, and um, I think it gives a much better experience when creating content within the interface. Um, yeah. So Juniper is also more supportive to its users, and I'm gonna try and go through make some examples. So my first one is, um, the JSST who get multiple emails a week about people who can't log into their sites, can't reset passwords, et cetera, et cetera. Please fix it for me. So to kind of help with this, for example, uh, on Joomla's admin login screen now, we now have two boxes, uh, or not boxes, sorry, because I boxed them myself for the slides to demonstrate that they're not in red. But we've now added a forgot your login details link, which takes us to use us directly to the documentation for resetting passwords. And we've also added links to our support channels. Um, the links to support channels are also modules, or is a module, I should say, so that um, you can actually um, link into a personal site if you're building a site for a client and want them to go via you rather than by the forum. Joomla uh, is also less complicated for content creators. There's now a system dashboard which provides separation um, between the administration of Joomla and producing content in Joomla, which is still through the main menu. So you can now see very simply what actually requires action. You can see the installation messages and warnings on the right hand side. So anywhere where there's a tick, there's basically um, a check going on and either you're going to get a tick to say everything's good or you're going to get a warning to say you need there's something that needs addressing. And whilst um, some people um, who I've come across in Joomla have complained that they feel like this is getting it out of the way, to me, this is exactly the benefit of it. Um, people who are coming in and creating articles in Joomla don't want to see any of this stuff. They don't manage the extensions day to day. They don't need to create, um, temp you know, edit their template styles or um, update Joomla or create modules. They want to go in and create their article or update a contact information or, I don't know, create a menu for their piece of content or create a user who can log in and who's joined their company. Um, you know, this, this, this administration doesn't need to be there um, and we've removed it. Um, or not removed it, but we've moved it out the way. And I think that whilst this might be a hard pill for some people to swallow, I think that they will get used to it very quickly. And I think your users will love you for it in the longer term. Uh, Joomla 4 is also less complicated for content creators. So um, as well as moving all that administration out of the way, uh, we have a button to create menu items directly from a content item. So that's the kind of reverse of what we had in Joomla 3, where we, from a menu item, allowed you to create your content. And again, this is to ease the standard user flows within Joomla. Um, also note, there's a preview button next to the versions tab, which allows takes you directly to the front end to view your article um, in its dev state. Um, as we talked about earlier, we've also got workflows for publishing content. Um, so I think, um, Benjamin emphasized it, but I also emphasize it. In larger teams, there's approvals process for new content, but also even in smaller teams, when I was in a startup of 15 people, we still had our head of marketing, who was the only person in marketing back then, um, 
actually review all the blog posts that were made to make sure that they gave across the right message and the company brand. Uh, and workflows help enforce this. They also help enforce it if you're just an individual with your own process and it allows you to help enforce your own process. Um, so um, again, Benjamin showed some of this, but you now, uh, instead of getting your status bar, uh, you can see you get uh, the status is now basically predefined and you're just executing transitions which execute this. This is obviously um, configurable as we talked about. Um, and you've got all the stages, um, the actions that you can make, the notifications you can make, uh, permissions to execute as well, which are very important if you're in a larger company. And I think this is going to make the uh, flow of content creation. Well, obviously, it's going to make a big difference in larger companies. But I think even in smaller companies, there's going to be a lot of smaller companies where even still, this is going to be a, a big win where you can get your clients to approve your content creation first, even if you're a team of one. Yeah. So that's kind of the content creation thing and ways that we've tried to make it um, easy for people to create content within Joomla. Uh, in complementariness to this, um, we've also rebuilt Media Manager. Um, we're aware that Media Manager in Joomla 3 had a large number of issues, and we rebuilt it literally from the ground up. Um, every line's changed. It's now a, 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 a JavaScript single page app um, that. Um, so there's no more click, wait for page to reload. Everything is dynamic on the fly. Um, and it has a significant cleaner interface. Um, and it's much, much, much easier to use. Um, so beyond just the basics in terms of ease of use, um, there's also the ability to do uh, basic image manipulation out the box. You get crop, resizing, rotation. Um, but also, um, this is plugin based, and I fully expect the ecosystem to grow around this. Um, and especially thinking of people who want to do this kind of um, uh, dynamic image resizing and that kind of thing. Um, there's a consistent view, of course, when you're inserting this content into articles. Um, and also, the actual display of the directories is plugin based. So that means that, although, of course, by default, we'll still load Joomla from your images directory. You can actually um, include um, content from other sources. Maybe you've got stuff in a cloud-based CDN, like on S3 or something like that, and you can manage that content from within Joomla 2 as well now. So I think um, this will make a big difference in people who are downloading lots of um, either image managers or um, custom editors over at TinyMC and stuff who are doing it with the exclusive aim to basically get a better media manager experience, I think this will make a big difference. Um, yeah. Um, another thing we've got within Joomla 4 is mail templates. So this allows you to customize the email templates uh, or customize the emails that are sent from your Joomla core. Up until now, um, you basically haven't had uh, a huge amount of uh, possibilities in terms of customizing what gets sent out. This changes. And the idea here is also to um, spice up the Joomla ecosystem here a bit and try and make um, give people more options in terms of um, how they're going to send their emails to go. Um, we're still working on some of how the user experience this component works. Um, emails are complicated things because you can set up text and HTML parts and have them separately. And it's kind of um, unclear to us right now what the best way of dealing with this is um, in a user experience. So we're definitely open to recommendations on how people um, find it works at the moment and how they would like it to work going forward. But um, I'm actually very excited for this feature. Um, another thing we've tried to do, especially in front end, is move towards CSS grids for our layouts. Um, so for those of you who haven't come across it, this is the browser native way of doing grids now. So instead of using Bootstrap grids in an attempt to slowly decouple ourselves from bits of Bootstrap, we're using CSS grids. Um, and um, what this allows you to do is you are having uh, different grid configurations uh, defined in CSS. So for example, um, with the example of a board game here, which comes directly from the specification, you can see that actually you get um, 
uh, you get you can do different configurations in an example here by whether the device is portrait or landscape. You can also move things around um, based on um, a size, screen size and that kind of thing. All your traditional media queries you would make in a uh, in a mobile uh, or in a in, in your CSS. Um, and I think um, to me, like the power is, is you can easily imagine how the different sections that are on the graph here are your modules. So you can move modules up and down the screen based on your page size and that kind of thing. So you can ensure that that left hand menu is at the bottom, is displayed at the bottom of the screen when you um, uh, when you shrink your uh, screen size down. So I think there's a lot of power and flexibility here for Joomla with the way its module and components are rendered. Um, so yeah, uh, this is kind of some of the ways that we've tried to implement more browser native things and kind of reduce our dependencies on Bootstrap so much to avoid the pains of upgrading so much. Um, we've also tried to open Joomla up to more people. So uh, Joomla 4 is going to be accessible uh, to uh, an AO standard of uh, web content accessibility guidelines. Uh, there's a full statement intent on the Joomla.org website. Uh, and we've been slowly going through uh, generating reports for both the back end and the front end of Joomla. Um, and trying to fix this, a massive shout out to Brian, who did his talk earlier, because he's um, been doing a lot of work on this. And I'm really impressed with what we've done. Um, yeah. Uh, so to give you an idea, a lot of this stuff you're never going to see, but the skip two links in the top left hand, uh, I put in is in my top left hand image. If you start to tab through your page, the first thing you're presented with is um, a skip to link, which allows you through tabbing to access all the important page nav elements. Um, if you go on to say the BBC website or the PayPal website, you'll also see similar functionality. This allows people to move around your content with ease um, and make sure that they're uh, give them an easy way to view the most accessible or to view the bits that they actually want to use as opposed to having to spend ages tabbing through lots of things. Um, and the other thing I've shown here is, is um, uh, on all our tables, um, we've now got captions which uh, state things like uh, what the filtered statuses are because it's less easy for people uh, with screen readers to be able to see this kind of thing. So um, the stuff in the red box there, you can't see it, but there's a hidden caption on the table that a screen reader will read out, which tells you that it's a table of articles, what, your, what the table is sorted by, and what the filters are on the table. Um, and it's these kinds of small things that you can't see that really make a, the, the world a difference to people who, um, who may, wouldn't be able to use Joomla until now and should open Joomla up a whole uh, new range of people to be able to utilize and make their content and um, make their lives easier. Um, and also a way of opening Joomla up, um, we're also making Joomla available to everyone through web services. So this is about making your content accessible to machines as opposed to other people. Um, <clears throat> so you can see uh, an example web service on the right, which is getting a list of articles and this is um, this API already covers the majority of core components. Um, and over the life of Joomla 4, the intention is basically every action that you can do within Joomla will have an API um, endpoint associated with it. So this allows you to build um, a Joomla as a headless CMS for sure. Um, I mean, maybe not with 4.0, depending on exactly what you need and exactly what API endpoints you need. But certainly as time goes on, that will 100% be an option. And um, also things like mobile apps and stuff development should become significantly easier too. Um, and uh, I've uh, run several GSOC projects and I've got had several GSOC students put a lot of effort into this and I'm very proud of the work that's happened through this. Um, similarly, uh, there is now a significantly improved CLI interface. Um, for those of you who have used Joomla CLI in the past, you have to create a full application object for everything. Um, that is a time of the past. <coughs> um, part of what we've done is we've uh, understood where people do things better than us. And uh, we have built a, uh, we've rebuilt the CLI on the Symfony interface, on also the Symfony CLI application. 
Um, and as you can tell, visually, it gives a much improved result. And we've also been able to um, build a better application wrapper for Joomla, uh, where you now build tasks, which can be uh, included through plugins. And that makes it uh, significantly easier to um, implement CLI actions. And you can see there's now a much bigger array of actions within Joomla. A lot of this is also uh, the extra actions is also due to a GSOC project managed by Nicola, um, which did some really cool stuff. So um, we have um, we've done actually a lot in Joomla beta, um, J4 beta. Um, there's so many more things I could show you, but uh, I'm kind of actually going to leave you to find out a lot of them on your own. And I'm going to kind of move on to talking about, and I hope I've sold a lot of the big features to you, um, or you go away and you try them out and you kind of persuade yourself that they're, they're real significant features that move Joomla into the next stage. So what I'm going to talk about next is the migration. Um, because as with all things Joomla, uh, people are always concerned. So um, in terms of migration, the hardest pain point is going to be the migration from Bootstrap 2 to Bootstrap 4. Um, but even that depends on what's going on within your template. You're almost certainly going to need to upgrade your extensions to latest versions because I think there's very few extensions that are already out of the box working with Joomla 4. Um, we're trying to make visualizing what extensions are compatible and what extensions need upgrading um, easier uh, with Joomla update support in 3.10. And you've got to remember that Joomla 3.10, not 3.9, I need to fix that typo will be supported for two years after Joomla 4 comes out. So you have time to plan your migration, but do not leave it till the last minute. Our aim is to produce a very stable Joomla 4 on day one. Um, we're not intending to, you know, we're not saying, you know, we understand that people aren't going to want to upgrade immediately, but don't leave it until one day before the end to start planning all the work you're going to do either. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be the end of the world. It's probably going to be slightly harder than 2.5 to 3 was because we're uh, removing more deprecated code uh, than we did between uh, 2.5 to 3. But I don't think it's going to be significantly worse. Um, and I'm hoping the, 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 the process is still going to be absolutely the same. It's still going to be one click. It's still going to be um, for core. It's mainly just a matter of making sure you um, upgrade all your extensions the right way as well. And to give you an idea of how we're trying to make this visualization process easier in Joomla 3.10, uh, this is what um, Joomla the 3.10 update checker looks like. Um, you can see that there's a list of third party uh, checks. Uh, back when I did this, it was a bit buggy and there were some unknown errors, but now. Um, it pretty unanimously gives a list of yes, no for all extensions that implement the Joomla uh, uh, implement the Joomla update process. It relies on the XML files that go through Joomla update process. So any components that don't use the Joomla update process won't show anything. But um, anything that uses the Joomla update process should pretty reliably now show you yes or no for its ability to update. Um, and there's still some designs going on for this, so keep your eyes peeled. Um, it's only going to get better. So um, that is largely Joomla 4. Uh, we touched a bit on what's coming next in the maintainer session, uh, but I'll quickly recap. Last year uh, in GSOC 2019, we started looking a bit beyond the Joomla 4 release and some more things that are going to come in 4.1, like 4.2 and later. So we're currently working across CMS group on an auto update feature. Um, you should expect to see a white paper soon on how we're going to keep this secure. Um, that's going to be in probably the production release, te uh, the production team's uh, meeting minutes um, very soon, probably the next few weeks. Um, we're working on a drag and drop page builder style application for templates that allows custom and dynamic module positions to be created. Um, they're currently not investigating doing this for content a la Gutenberg as things stand. 
Um, we're producing guidelines for extensions to be compatible with WCAG AA because there's no point in shipping core to be accessibly if none of your extensions are. And we're obviously, as I already said, going to continue our API work. So all actions within Joomla have a corresponding API action. So um, we're already kind of, as a production team, looking beyond where four is, although obviously we're not taking our, uh, our, our you know, we're not, we're not taking four for granted until it's out, until it's shipped either. Um, so that's where Joomla 4.0 and 4.x releases are looking. Um, so the last thing I'm going to say is kind of volunteers um, are the kind of foundation stone of Joomla. And uh, we always need volunteers to help us finish. So um, with the release of beta, things are increasingly moving on from just code. We need people to volunteer to help who are um, outside of just the code space. So that's things like documentation, testing, um, marketing, um, all these kinds of things. Um, all these things are things that we want people to volunteer for to try and help because um, actually physically writing code is increasingly going to become less important as we get towards the stable release and trying to make sure that um, the larger ecosystem is prepared is going to be increasingly important. So um, finally, I would like to give a massive shout out to all the people who have contributed towards Joomla 4. There's a lot of people over the last kind of five-ish year to have put in a huge amount of time um, of their free lives and i would really like to appreciate it i'm not going to give a list because as soon as i give a list i will always miss people off the list but um i think the people who have put in a lot of time know who they are and they can be really really proud of themselves for what they've done um and i really hope you guys test the beta i especially appeal to extension developers to start looking at the beta and giving feedback now about what does and doesn't work for them so that we can improve and try and make the developers process to upgrade easier. We're more than willing to listen to try and make sure it's easy for you guys to have a 3.10 and 4 compatible install of your extensions, because we understand that that is going to be a requirement for the ecosystem. We can't just expect you all to support Joomla 4 only on day one. So please give feedback about things that we can do to make your lives easier. Um, don't suffer in silence. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what I've got to say, and I'm kind of open for questions. George, I don't have a question, but I have something to add. Uh, you just mentioned a long list of people uh, who, who invested countless hours in Juma 4. You've missed one person, um, which is pretty important and pretty much on top of that list, and that's you. Um, thank you so much for the for the endless amounts of time that you've invested in in getting Joomla 4 beta out of the door. Um, I, I, I think I, I remember each and every Joomla release that we ever had, um, and I can barely remember one that uh, made me so excited uh, like I am right now. So uh, thank you for moving that along. Um, it's appreciated. And uh, you'll probably be moved into the, the golden hall of Joomla all time. No, no, no. I don't think that's how it works, but yeah. <laughs> you have to accept that. Okay, questions. Uh, how many Peters are planned? Um, we don't have a fixed number. Um, and that's the same reason why I haven't put a release date on it is, um, like I said, we want, we want extension developers to come back to us and give us um, opinions or give us feedback on how the upgrade process is. If we find lots of extension developers are finding it very easy to upgrade, there's going to be, and the releases are relatively stable, then there's not going to be many betas. If we find that developers are really struggling to create versions of the code that are compatible on 3.10 and 4, despite our efforts, then it's going to be longer while we take the time to make it right for them. Um, I think that we've done a relatively good job. Like we've been testing with web links, especially because that's a standalone thing and trying to make sure that we can install it on 3.10 and 4 at the same time. And so I'm relatively confident it's going to be okay. But until people start trying with 
the extensions, it's really hard to put a timeline or a number of releases or whatever on it. Um, hopefully in like a couple of months time when there's been a few more beaters, uh, we'll have a better feeling. Okay, and that's it question wise. All the rest in the chat is just people being amazed, people freaking out, people being excited. So yeah. don't be any better. Please test guys. Please, 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 please. <laughs> okay, and with those uh, final last words, um, I'm sending you into the last break, which will give you the chance to download uh, beta one and start testing as George said. Um, we'll be back in 19 minutes for the last session of uh, Jeff 2020 online together with Duke. Um, and uh, yeah, then uh, I think it's almost over. Um, so yeah, thank you once again. Uh, thank you, George, for taking the time showing us Juno 4 and um, see you in a couple of thank minutes. You.